Hey everybody, this is Slocon 2022. By the way, this is not a MAGA hat. It's a red hat hat. It's a red hat hat. Hi, my name is Bacha Galoop. Um, some of you may know me, some of you may not. Pretty easy to find on the interwebs. Um, so I want to tell you here, I'm here to tell you, I hate OKRs. However, I love SLOs. Uh, I've worked in um, two large organizations that used OKRs, and they were both a mess. Um, and, and I'll get into a little bit more about, you know, some of the, my ideas and about that. Um, I've worked in uh, two organizations where we've implemented SLOs and SLIs. Uh, not a big fan of SLAs, but that's another discussion. Um, one was a mess, and one worked out pretty well. So, okay. So, uh, with that, um, let's see now. Um, there's another guy that actually would hated MBOs, hated MBRs, but certainly would hate OKRs. Dr. Edwards Deming, um, uh, but I'm pretty sure, and uh, you'll see, I've studied him pretty heavily. Uh, Ed, if you will, um, would have loved SLOs. Okay, so there we go. So if you're um, not familiar with Dr. Deming, um, you've probably heard some of his quotes. Um, you know, the learning is not compulsory, neither is survival. In God we trust, all others bring data. A bad system will beat a good person every time. That's one of my per personal favorites. Um, and every system is perfectly designed to get the result that it does. Some, uh, for those of you baseball fans, um, sort of the Yogi Berra of uh, management, if you will. Um, so some might say I'm obsessed with uh, Dr. Deming. Um, that's probably true. My Twitter handle shows him. Uh, some people think that's a younger me. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, I, I've, um, I've been studying Dr. Deming um, for about 10 years now. And in fact, um, Gene Kim, good friend of mine, uh, we, we co-wrote the DevOps Handbook together, along with Chez Humble and Patrick Dubois. He's been... Um, telling me I should write a book about Dr. Deming for, uh, I would say, almost 10 years now. And I've been studying him for 10 years. But um, I finally, during the pandemic, realized I, I um, gathered back a lot of extra time. So I actually spent the last, say, year and a half writing a book, about 300 pages, 20 chapters. Um, it, the book is called Ed. It's in its second draft. So it's still, I'm hoping to get it done by the end of the summer. So friends and family will probably be able to uh, get a copy, um, and then, you know, uh, depending on the publisher, I'm, I'm working with a couple of publishers, so. Um, they, I like the quote I said, Steven Spielberg said that you write your first version for yourself, your second version for your friends, and now in the, the uh, sort of third edition for the, everybody. So um, anyway, it's been a lot of fun, and uh, it, in general, I wanted to give you a general idea, or in general, give you an idea of what, who Dr. Deming is, um, I'm not going to go through his whole history. That would tell take well over an hour, and you know, you read my book or there's many books around him. But um, he was he had a PhD in mathematical physics, and the key here is he was getting it in the 1920s, right? So it was a time of you know quantum, the second scientific revolution. So he was straddling straddling uh, these two ideas, and and you'll see, uh, or if you study him and look at him, you realize he picked up a lot of that non-deterministic thinking. Um, he was uh, a learner, I would say, of, of epistemology. He was fascinated by C.I. Lewis's work in pragmatism. Um, he based that work into what he called his theory of knowledge, um, theories, systems. Um, he was um, systems thinking. Um, he studied systems dynamics. He worked in the, um, the RAD, MIT, and Harvard lab during World War II alongside Norbert Wiener, Mr. Cybernetics. Um, even Shannon, they, they sort of all huddled around ENIAC. Um, so he had that sort of background. His business card would say that he's um, a statistician. So that was a lot of the statistical process control uh, work uh, was pushed by him heavily. Um, he was a professor, um, uh, he, a professor in so many ways um, in academia at, at, at Yale and a number, and I think New, Columbia. Uh, probably NYU and George Washington among the places. Also, he taught a class during World War II on quality, which some say um, helped the, that quality initiative 
to uh, plant managers and manufacturers during World War II were part of the reason we won the war. Um, the, um, he worked with uh, Senge in his later years, uh, the fifth discipline guy. Um, he was an agriculturist, um, industrialist. Uh, one of his biggest fames, most people might know him, is where he worked with Japan after World War II to help rebuild in what they called the miracle, uh, the miracle in Japan. Um, and then um, in the 80s um, was picked up by American, particularly Detroit, and started working with Ford and General Motors. And, and I have a podcast that covers a lot of that cool stuff, so a lot of cool stories there. So, uh, And he was, uh, you know, I mean, the way I got involved with Deming is Ben Rockwood suggested that I look at Deming's 14 points and read Out of the Crisis. And that was right smack in the early days of DevOps. And I was like, oh, my God, that that's basically DevOps. Um, the... Um, but here's the thing about MBOs and OKRs. So, so from Deming's first book, um, in Out of the Crisis, he wrote in 83. So he was 83 years old when he wrote his first book, right? Um, he had written a lot of papers and research, but his first real sort of general book, um, you know, he said the focus on outcomes or, you know, anything by results, management by numbers, MBOs, standards, specifications, zero defects, uh, must be abolished. I mean, he, you know, he was adamant about, like, why that um, – you know why that was troublesome, and and uh, the um, basically, um, you know, he would say by what method, not by what results. Um, you know, and, and you know, he would argue if he saw OKRs today, they're not really based on systems thinking; they're very componentized. Now, again, I know OKRs are better than sort of KPIs and all, and did, uh, I'm not saying they're sort of, I'm not saying they're not terrible, <laughs> but I'm not saying they're terrible either. But um, but the point is, in general, the way I've seen them implemented, they are not really based on systems thinking. They're very results or objective based. Um, you know, Deming again would go back to the method, and and you know the thing about when you have results or specific objectives, um, and you tie that to people's sort of bonuses or worth or, or um, you know, sort of um, you know, anytime they're going to get uh, promotions, right? They're going to game the system. Right. And then, so Deming was more about cooperation versus competition. It's just human nature. So um, so, again, a lot more to talk about this in, in longer than 10 minutes. So um, but the point is, if you look at in his second book, New Economics, you know, a goal that lies beyond the means of its accomplishment will lead to discouragement, frustration, demoralization. In other words, there must be a method to achieve an aim, a goal. By what method? You know, that again, um, this idea of the method and and one of his students, um, the uh, Lloyd Nelson, uh, a great statistician, by the way, um, had basically, um, you know, this idea that if you accomplish a goal without a method, then why didn't you do it last year? I would add, you're probably not going to do it next year unless you get lucky, right? And all this really boils down to the, the Chinese proverb in general Give a person a fish, you feed them for a day. Teach a person to fish, and you feed them for a lifetime, right? Uh, it, you know, it seems platitudish, but again, by what method? How do you do it? Um, and then sort of that leads me into why Deming probably would like SLOs. I, in fact, I'm sure he'd love SLOs for a number of reasons, right? Um, SLIs are the method, right? Um, the, you know, so there is the method, it's not just sort of, you know, again, I, I know that people put up good arguments for OKRs and some people find them useful, but the but this idea that like you've got to do this, you've got to do that, this will happen without giving the method of doing it. Uh, SLIs are built into it. You can't have an SLO. I mean, again, I'm like I'm the last guy that's going to teach you at this conference SLIs and SLOs, although I have implemented them, and but there's way more, way better people here to tell you that. The point being, that's the method. The second point I'd like to make is, I think if you're doing SLOs right, you are incorporating a, a larger umbrella of systems thinking. You know, like take, I took this slide from uh, the Noble Nine uh, folk, uh, shout out to Kit Merker, he's a good friend of mine, been a great sort of advocate for me and, and me for him. Uh, so I took out one of their app dynamics slides that they've done. And, you know, here's a systems approach to sort of telemetry, right? Like, it's not just saying, like, you must have this. 
Um, it, it's showing by definition, it includes a lot of indicators that create a, SLOs. And then again, we don't really have time to go into error budgeting, but like you can see the point how error budgeting creates a more um, management by means structure. And then I think last, but certainly not least, is there's no attachment to an SLO. And this is what Deming would really love to your bonus. Or I hope you don't do it. Like if you're doing it that way, you're doing it terribly wrong. But um, there's no attachment to the bonus. Um, you know, uh, it, it, it's sort of built in that an everybody wins scenario, right? It's systems thinking in its core. I mean, Deming hated, the, he basically felt that the minute you basically created a competitive environment, you basically didn't get the results that you thought you were going to get, right? So... So thank you very much. You can find me just about anywhere uh, as Botch Gloop, certainly on Twitter. My, uh, uh, basically, I have um, a blog site that basically has my blogs and um, my links to my podcasts uh, at profound-deming.com, or you can find me on the Apple Podcasts under Profound, and that's the ID. But you can get to them from my website. Well, thank you very much. Um, I hope you have a great conference. Mm -hmm.